Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is video editorial for the problem GCD Extreme. So the problem is taken from Spodge and this belongs to a number number theory category. So the problem is you are given you are given Q queries. Uh, the queries can be a, as many as uh, twenty thousand, and in each query you will be given a number n, and you have to calculate g. As you can see. Uh, this is the value of G you can pause and have a look at this and the input ends at when given n is equals to 0 so uh, the total number of queries can be as large uh, as many as 20,000 and uh, Q is not given so the input ends when n is equals to 0 so that is the point where you have to start now if you understand uh, if we take a look at the problem the problem specifically asks this for if n is equals to 6 you are supposed to calculate this gcd 1 1 plus gcd of 1 2 plus gcd of 2 2 plus gcd of 1 3 2 3 3 3 plus gcd of 1 4 2 4 3 4 4 4 and so on up uh uh till 6 gcd 1 6 plus 2 6 plus 3 6 4 6 5 6 and 6 6 now i must see in the previous slide you can see i must be less than j right uh here okay i yeah j is i plus one so clearly j is greater than i but here i'm using in these i'm using i is equals to j right and that is the problem but uh, don't worry we'll be calculating this for given n and later you can re remove all of these GCD of 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. Basically, you can calculate the whole result and then subtract n into n plus 1 divided by 2, which is basically sum of all of the integers because we these are the extra terms I am keeping for certain purposes, which we do not need. Now, if you see, I can, uh, I can consider f of n. Uh, I am defining a new function f of n which is equals to gcd of 1 comma n plus gcd of 2 comma n plus gcd of 3 comma n plus dash 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 gcd of n comma n right so I am defining f of n like this now the same result can be written in the form of this result is equals to f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus dash 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 f n so now see uh, since fn is this then result can be written down as this so basically for a given n uh, what we can do we can define a new we can take a new array which will be basically the prefix sum of all fi's right so f of i is basically uh, f sum of f1 through fi so basically f of i is prefix sum or through f of i's now if you have to answer for n the result would be sum of n because sum of n is basically uh, f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 dash 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 till f of n and that is exactly what we want so till now don't think about this how we are gonna calculate this just make sure you, that you understand all of this if f f1 through fn all of that we have pre-calculated then we can pre-calculate the prefix sum over fi's and then result would be sum of n that is exactly what we want yeah you need to make sure that you subtract n into n plus 1 divided by 2 as well because there are extra terms that we are keeping here right so that is exactly what we are doing here so each time we are reading n if n is equals to 0 we are breaking this is the solution we are stopping because that is the point where we have to stop otherwise we are printing sum of n now you might see you might see that i am not subtracting, uh, subtracting n into n plus 1 divided by 2 the reason is because i have already taken care uh, of the thing where i was pre-calculating sum and f of i's i have already taken care of that i have already removed the extra terms there so the question is how this is the question uh, if you can uh, calculate f1 through fn for maximum n maximum n can be i guess 1 million so for for n is equals to 1 uh, times power 6 if we can calculate f1 through fn efficiently then for each query we can uh, each query we can answer efficiently how all you have to do is calculate this f1 through fn after that 
uh, we can pre-calculate the sum array which is basically uh, prefix sum and then all you have to do is uh, print the sum of n right uh, the main question is how you can calculate efficiently f uh, f i is from 1 to f uh, fn now you see fn is actually this one this term you can calculate either by running a loop from 1 to n and calculating each time gcd of i comma n and each time adding into f of n right or you can do this i have already explained the sum of gcd is actually what you can do either you can run a loop from 1 to n and then each time calculate their gcd with n or what you can do you can go through all of the divisors of n and f of n will be equal to d times phi of n by d where phi is euler stoshian function and d is divisor of n now i uh, this formula i have already explained in lecture 20 and 21 of number theory course series i have also provided the proof so i'll be directly uh, i'll be assuming that you already already are familiar with this formula now instead of running a loop from 1 to n what we what we can do we can only uh, go through the divisors of n and then evaluate this function if we have the list of divisor unfortunately uh, there is uh, the, uh, you can calculate the list of divisor in square root of n time so instead of running a loop from 1 to n you can run a loop till square root of n so this somehow reduces the time complexity reduces it from uh, it reduces the uh, loop running process from big of n to only square root of n assuming that you have already calculated phi uh, already calculated phi using sieve you can calculate phi from 1 to n in n log n time i have also explained that in number theory course series so i'll be using this formula but the problem with this formula is again that we have to calculate for each n from 1 to uh, we have to calculate f of n for each n from 1 to uh, a million right so for each n we cannot actually run a loop till square root of n right because that again will result into tle that is time limit ex exceeded so what we are going to do we are again going to use sieve to calculate f of n from 1 to n in n log n time and how do we do that see let me explain you through an exa example so suppose i have to calculate f of n from 1 to 6 right so i have to calculate f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 right so this is the f array assume a uh, final final array or uh, fine final expression should look like this right f1 should be equal to 1 times phi of 1 f2 should because 1 is the only divisor of 1 f2 should be equal to 1 times phi of 2 plus 2 times phi of 1 right because 1 and 2 both are divisor of 5 and uh, both are divisor of 2 and so on so uh, initially as you can see there is nothing this is just for reference because finally uh, these all should look like this what i'm going to explain you just wait a couple of minutes all of these are initialized with 0 so there's nothing so what we'll do we'll let me take you through code first so first what i'm doing i'm uh, calling the function in it with a passing maximum n which is a million so what i am doing here here you can see i'm using three arrays phi lli is long long in basically 64 bit integer phi of uh, up to a million then sum and then f array right now from here to here this is nothing but i'm calculating phi using sieve method in n log n which i have already explained so not going to do that here i have uh, already explained that in number theory course here you can see i'm calculating uh, i'm using a loop in instead of a, uh, i'm using something like sieve they in fact the exact thing like you see in the sieve you run a loop outside and then for each multiple of i you do something that is like doing the sieve thing i'm using the sieve alg algorithm to calculate all fi's in n log n time but the question is how is this working so see here so we'll be running a loop from 1 to n to initialize all of f of i's till a million so we'll running uh, we'll be running a loop from 1 to n n in this case is only 6 so when i is equals to 1 you'll be going to all of the multiple of 1 and then you are going to add i times phi of j by i where j is the multiple of i i currently is 1 so all of the j would be 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 why because all of these number will have 1 as their divisor if 1 is the divisor of all of these numbers 
clearly 1 times 1 times phi of if you call these j j by i should be added right into their result while calculating f of j right so that is why for all of the multiple we will be adding i times phi of j by i 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are multiple of 1. So, in all of these, I will be going there and adding i times phi of j by i, where j is multiple of i. For 1, I have, uh, for 1, these are the multiple of 1. So, I have updated all of these. Now, when i is equals to 2, there are 3 divisors, uh, multiple of 2. So, for all of these number, 2 is actually their divisor. So, in all, for all 2, 4 and 6, you will be going there. In the array, f of 2, you will be adding 2 times 5 of 2 by 2. 2 times 5 of 4 by 2 and 2 times 5 of 6 by 2. Right? When uh, So, basically, for i is equal to 2, you are going to all of the multiple because now, for all of the multiple, 2 would be the actually divisor. Right? So, in them, you have to add the divisor times the number by divisor. Right? Number is actually 2. So, 2 by 2. 2 times 4 by 2, 2 times 6 by 2 and so on. So what is actually happening here is that for each i will be looking at uh, for for what numbers this is actually their divisor. If this is their divisor then in, in their f while calculating the, their f i times phi of j by i must be added into their result right and that is exactly what we are doing here. For each uh, we will start from i and for each multiple of i will be adding i times phi of j by i into the result and finally when this runs and what would be the complexity of this looks like n square but this will be n log n and to prove the complexity you can actually uh, use uh, uh, integration of n by x that would provide you the n log n time complexity the upper bound on the time complexity of this for loop so in n log n time which is basically using c we are able to calculate all of the fi's right after that the only thing that remains is to calculate the sum or the prefix array and prefix array is sum right so sum of i is equal to sum of i minus 1 the way you calculate prefix sum and plus f of i but also subtracting i because f of i also contains the extra term which is gcd of i comma i GCD of i comma i is i, so I am subtracting i, so that I do not have to subtract later on. After that, uh, this is a for loop that runs from 1 to n. So after the prefix sum is calculated, all you have to do is run, uh, print the result from sum that is prefix array. Don't worry, I'll be providing the code in the description of the video. If you want to learn more about the number theory, then an academy has provided lectures which are completely free for competitive programming they have uh, they have uh, courses on competitive programming which in which you can enroll yourself if you have money if you want to invest it for good or if you want to watch the free lectures there are a lot of free lectures for competitive programming as well uh, being taught by one of the best guys so you can see there are a lot of lectures on number theory like C of Aristotle's introduction to convex hull matrix uh, matrix problem solution on graph and then topological sorting and so on there are a lot of lectures uh, there are a lot of lectures related to each category like number theory graph theory all, all of them are completely free and of course if you want to take the uh, if you want to enroll yourself for the courses there are extra steps as well that you can learn you can take for for one one month uh, i guess there is one month three month and six month or one month six month and 12 month subscription available you can use my code and avail 10 percent off so uh, or otherwise if you do not have for now money or you can always uh, or if you also want to just check whether these guys how these guys teach these are these guys are good or not for your money to be invested in, in in their courses so or you can always go for the free lectures there are a lot of lectures including uh, from very basic concept to the very advanced concept like convex hull you can always go there check out the lecture if you like of course and if you have money you want to invest it you can go there and buy their subscription for i guess one month six month and 12 month subscription are there available so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching if you have any doubt or query you can ask in the comment section
So thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding. Thank you.